Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today with makeup but no eye makeup, which means I'm gonna be testing a palette. So if you're not familiar with this format, what I do is I take a palette that I've never used before. I use it for the first time on camera. I swatch it, I do all that kind of stuff, describe it, talk about it. And then I check back in through generally a minimum of four days, sometimes five, sometimes six, sometimes seven. Um, and I use the palette and I show you the looks I've created, what I think about the shades and the looks as I use them. And then I conclude what I think about the palette at the end. So it's like a first impressions over like X amount of days video. So this will probably be the last one for a couple of weeks or maybe a month because I've got eyeshadow palette fatigue. Um, I've been doing a lot of these reviews lately. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that. Uh, but this one I really wanted to do. I didn't want to leave this one hanging because it's a palette that I've been really, really excited about. We talked about it in Beauty News and I was like, look, I really want this. And if I place an order in the future, I'm definitely putting this in my cart. Um, and Linda saw that and she sent me one, which was so sweet of her. So thank you very much, Linda. She also sent another couple of things. So the H2 Glow face mist. I might use that later. I don't have a face mist on yet. Um, and also a like black crayon and a sharpener. So um, I might be using this with one of the looks. I don't know if I'll use it today, but um, I'm very excited. So getting on to the actual palette, this is from Linda Holberg and um, the colors on the outside, the sort of pastel vibe is what you get on the inside. So this is the Spectral Eyeshadow Palette. Um, and it's sort of like, I think their first like colorful, like true colorful palette. They do have some sort of basic eye and face palettes, like multi-use palettes, and also some sort of topper metallic palettes. Um, but this one is, is quite colorful and it's limited edition as far as I'm aware. I just love the color combination that was used. It's beautiful. It's right up my alley. So you slide it out and it's like a nice, uh, it's, it's a cardboard palette, but it's a shiny, like it's going to e be easy to uh, wipe clean. So this is actually a very thin palette, which I'm quite happy about. So it's, there's not too much excess bulk. There is a sheet in here to protect. Uh, there's a nice size mirror, which I could easily hold and do my makeup in. I can pretty much see from here down to here, holding this mirror, which is great. Um, there's eight eyeshadows in here and they're beautiful. So I do like a pop of color. I do like what I call wearable color. Um, and I think a lot of these, even though some of them are quite pastel and quite, um, they can be quite bold uh, depending on what you're comfortable with. So like a Tiffany blue can be quite extreme for some people, this sort of duochrome blue. Um, but there also has some really nice sort of wearable shades like this peachy shade, this berry shade I'm really interested in. Um, there's a silver, there's a green that's got shimmer in it. Um, so we've got matte, 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 matte. So those for a matte and then we've got a duochrome and two shimmer shades and like a sparkle, like a pressed sparkle sort of shade. So I will swatch these. It's the first time I've opened it. It's very pretty. And each pan contains 2.5 grams of product. Uh, it is 100% vegan and cruelty free. So made in Italy. Uh, I would say also that if you like some of these colors as blushes and or just want to play with them on your face, I reckon you could totally go there. I think that'd be beautiful. All right, let's get some close up action. So that's um, Linda on the front, but it's looking all arty. Um, I do like that the colors sort of on the front do represent the colors inside. Then we have the information on the back and the ingredients. So there you go. So those are the shades. They look pretty true to pan in this lighting, I hope. At least on the monitor, it sort of looks like that, but you can definitely see the different uh, textures in them. And probably the light is blocking this one a bit. So if I move it over, you can see the shade Occult better. That's being hidden by my microphone. So, and there's the silver a bit more accurately. So I'm going to swatch them from this shade through to that shade, then that shade through to that shade. And I'm just going to finger swatch them on no primer. Okay, first three shades, they feel really nice and soft to pick up, but they don't feel overly powdery. There's not a lot of kick up in the pan when I uh, swirl my finger in it, which is nice. So we'll go the first shade here, which is a beautiful like apricot peachy shimmer. Then we've got the green, which is like a lime shimmer. Got a matte purple, which is, oh, it's such a beautiful color. So I'm just going over that a few times because I was just blending out the pigment. All right, next three shades. So this is the duo chrome shade. This looks like a topper. What you can't see, which I might try to show later, is in my angle, I see it very pinky purple, but it's looking blue straight onto the camera. So it is a duo chrome. We have like that glitter 
Um, oh, this is really interesting. So it's like a pressed glitter and it definitely has a lot of glitter in it, but it doesn't feel like it's a chunky glitter, but it doesn't feel like it's very flaky, if you know what I mean. Like it applied sort of like a slightly chunkier eyeshadow, but that's a really intense silver. I'm not a huge silver fan, but I can see the beauty in that. Then this shade really inspires me. This is more of a plum shade. Whoa. So this is similar to the other matte where it does, you know, there's a lot of pigment, but to blend it into a like swatch, you got to go over it a couple of times, but that's a beautiful shade there. Oh, these are super fun. So these are the last two shades. We have a beautiful Tiffany blue. Whoa, that is insane and also like a Barbie pink that is beautiful as well. I don't know what to use today. I'm so torn. All right, on my eyes, I have the Bare Minerals Primer in the shade Lit. Uh, that's what I'm gonna be using on all looks in this video because I've currently got this in my project pan. Um, I'm gonna start with the sort of, uh, this is what, the lime green shade. So I'm just gonna put that sort of on the inner portion so there isn't much, like I said, kick up in the pan. These apply, like they're not super, super opaque off the bat, but there's no fallout. There's no like, they seem to be really like well-behaved eyeshadows, but you just have to build them up because they are like a lighter sort of pastel color. But I just want to do a bit of green in there. Then on the other side of the brush, I'm going in with that Tiffany Blue Matte. This is a beautiful color. I'm really excited to use this. This was sort of the color I wanted to be the main color of the look. So my base is very set. I put my base on probably like, I don't know, half an hour ago, sometime maybe a bit longer. So if you want this to be a bit more sticky, like grip to your eye, you might want to, you know, put it straight over a sticky base. It can be sort of applied quite lightly if you just want a little like wash of color, if you want to do that sort of really diffused hazy look, which is really pretty. Um, but I reckon this is a gorgeous color. And then on a bit of a jacked up <laughs> fluffy brush that I washed the other day and clearly didn't reset properly, I'm just gonna blend that color into the crease. I want that to be sort of blown out. I really love the idea of like a blown out sort of minty eye. I think it's really, really pretty, but I am gonna put a pop of purple in there too because, you know, it's what I wanna do. All right, so that color definitely has some guts to it. It gets quite bold. Um, I did layer a little bit in the crease. It has taken away a little bit of the, like the sort of lime color on the inner corner. So I'll go back later and I'll pop a little bit more of that on, but I do want to put a little bit of purple and that dark purple in the outer corner and then decide what to do with my lower lash line. So this is that gorgeous uh, soft purple color. This, there is a little bit of fallout with this one, but it might be, how I picked it up on the brush. This is quite a soft formula. So I just wanna do a little pop of that in the corner to sort of help blend the dark purple color. I might run that on the lower lash line too. All right, so that's a nice purple. You can see it there, but it is like a sort of subtle haze of purple. There's a bit of fallout, which I'll flick away soon. Fallout be gone. Yeah, it just flicks away, which makes it not a problem. What I might experiment with over the next couple of days is if putting different um, like less set primers, maybe even a glitter glue, um, a stickier primer, if different primers intensify this, because even though this is a beautiful sort of wash of color and this would be beautiful all over the lid with a pop of that peach, I might do that another day. Um, it, yeah, I'd like to see if it can get more vibrant. All right, one thing that I've discovered that I really dig is if you meet the sort of uh, Tiffany blue and the purple together, it creates this beautiful true blue, um, sort of light pastel sort of sky blue. It's very pretty. So you can mix colors in this palette as well. And that I think just has made the look a little bit more interesting. All right, just to deepen this look a little bit, I've got that dark purple shade and I just wanna put that right in the outer corner. So that's why I sort of wanted to lay down this light purple just to see how this dark purple can transition to it. Now this does look a little bit patchy. I wonder if it's the brush I'm using. Um, I might swap out for a fluffier brush. That seems to be lifting what I've already put on. So I'm just gonna run a little bit down here before I trans like I swap to a fluffier brush. All right, I'm really liking how the colors are coming together. I just don't love the patchiness there. So I've gone back in with the same uh, blending brush that I used to put on that Tiffany blue, but I did wipe it off a little bit and I've got some of that purple. I'm just gonna see if that blends that a little bit better. 
All right, so that is looking a lot better, but it's definitely taken away all the purple. So I'm just gonna pat a little bit on to make it a little bit more intense in that outer corner. Whoa, that's gorgeous, packed on with a finger. Whoa. All right, I'm looking a little bit Ursula from The Little Mermaid, which is fine, but I'm just gonna blend this out a little bit because I feel like going up too high with those colors, I feel like it's making it a little bit less wearable. I might actually go off and mute that down with a cream colored eyeshadow or like a setting powder just to diffuse that a little bit. So on camera, it doesn't look too bad, but in person, it looks like it's actually touching my brows. But before I do that, I'm going in with a little bit of that original green just to pop in the inner corner. Um, what I'll do now is I might just tidy up this a little bit, take it down a notch, um, put some liner on, some mascara and whatnot, and come back and show you the complete look. All right, so this is the final look. I did put a little bit of Wet n Wild eyeshadow just up here to help it blend um, because there was a lot of color going up to my brow. I did put the Marc Jacobs Ultra Skinny Gel Liner on my waterline. This is in the shade Cinderella, which is this beautiful sort of gray blue, and it really looks blue with these colors. So this is the Shuramura Water Paint Ink Liner in the shade Indigo Blue. And that one, I did have a bit of issue with it bleeding just there. So I tried to touch it up, but I couldn't fix it entirely. So ignore that little bit there. But um, yeah, mascara, some half lashes, and that is the final look, which is a very pretty soft, pastel, cool toned look. All right, so does this eye look and this lip and this t-shirt go well together? Probably not. I might change this out for more of a brown sort of orange color. So at least something matches a little bit, but I think it's a really sort of pretty look. I think it came together reasonably easy. Um, and even though some shades weren't super, super pigmented, do I have a tiny bit of fallout? Yeah, brush that away, that's fine. So even though the colors weren't super bold when I put them on, so for example, this green, that purple, that was a little bit patchy. This was definitely the most pigmented of the bunch that I've used today. I think they definitely do build up to quite a bold statement look and they're pastel. So even though in my head I'm thinking, okay, I want them to apply really, really bold, I've got to remember that they're pastels. So um, firstly, pastels tend to be harder to formulate, but also they're not going to be like a like a real punchy color. They're des designed to look like a bit of a diffused sort of um, color on the eye. So even though they weren't the most bold to apply, they definitely build up and um, you can see the color. It's not as if it's wishy-washy and very chalky. The color is definitely there. So one thing that I'm really excited about as well, uh, delving into this is not only the fact that you can take the individual colors, um, but knowing that mixing these creates a really like nice pastel version of this, I actually put it on my hand. So um, you've got the sort of teal color, you've got the purple and in between is the mixed color, which is like a sky blue sort of soft blue. Knowing that they do mix, I'm even more excited to sort of play with these. I would have loved just on first impressions for there to be like a lemon yellow, like maybe instead of the silver, because then you can start really mixing, um, you know, to make a more chartreuse color, to make a more sort of, uh, brighter orange. So I would have loved a yellow in there just because the mixing like it intrigues me. All right, day number two. And uh, if you've watched these videos before, you either know that I tend to go quite extreme with the makeup or quite minimal with the makeup. And today is an editing day. So I'm using this palette in a very minimal way. Um, I've used just two colors and I've just used it with a fluffy brush. So I use the same primer, but I put the product on pretty much straight away. Um, I think it did stick pretty well, but I used this shade just all over the lid. Like I even used it as a blush today. So I just used with a, since these pans are quite large, um, I just, you know, used a fluffy brush. Uh, and just put it on my cheeks as well. So I've sort of got um, matching eyes to cheeks. And then uh, what I decided to do, which I'll show you when you zoom, when I zoom in a bit, because it's sort of hard to see uh, really diffused, is I um, put a tiny bit of that green color just in the outer corner, just to put a bit of color variation in there. So uh, it's just these two colors today. So I'll zoom in. So hopefully you can see, I just swept that coral like on the lower lash line, on the lid. Uh, sort of in the inner corner, up into the crease. I've just swept it all over. Um, it does have a bit of an iridescence to it, which is nice. So uh, it's not actually a very, very shimmery shade, but there is some shimmer to it. So it gives the eye a bit of a glow and some dimension, which is nice. And then I don't know if you can see, but right in the outer corner, I just popped a little bit of the green just to make it look a little bit different. And all it's really doing 
is making it look a little bit more brown. I just really wanted to see if I can make this quite um, as nude as possible. So if you can, I don't know if you can, I'll turn this down even more. If you can see that just there, there's a bit of brown, that's just because I've mixed the two colors together. So this does show that you can get a very soft, subtle look using this palette, but I am going to try to endeavor to create some bold looks, some medium kind of colorful looks and more soft looks as well, because I do know that a lot of um, concern that people have about this palette is how wearable it is on a daily basis. All right, look number three, and I wanted to go a little bit softer, but still a bit of color. So I tested out um, some of these shades here. So I put this color all over the lid. Um, then I just buffed a little bit of the purple into the crease. I think with this purple shade, it seems to apply very smoothly and blend out really nicely and complement some of the shades in this, uh, but it's not super, super opaque on its own unless you build it up with your finger. So it's very soft in the crease. Then I wanted to use the pink, so I ran that along the lower lash line and just sort of brought it up into the sort of tear duct area. That's surprisingly pigmented. So similar to how this matte's pigmented, that one is also really easy. Um, and then I just blended it out a lot because I wanted to have more of a diffused sort of color look. I use the ColourPop Mascara. This is the shade Blue Ya Mind. So it is like this color. So I put that on my lashes to add a little bit of blue. I sort of think that if you like these sort of really soft but colorful looks, like these are really pretty in spring and whatnot, um, I think that's probably where this palette shines because this didn't take any effort to build up. Um, it was just really easy to apply. Whereas when on day one, when I packed on the product, it did take a little bit and like fingers and stuff to really make the shadows quite opaque. But um, if you just like this sort of haze of color, this sort of romantic soft look, that's where I think this palette works best. I almost forgot to mention that I'm also using the pink uh, that I've got on the lower lash line as a blush. I really would have loved to have seen a sort of uh, shimmery, like the same sort of shimmery as that peachy color. I'd like to see like a lemon yellow. I think that would have been really pretty in this palette instead of the silver, but whatever. All right, look number four. And I thought I'd go for a slightly more bold look because the last two looks I created were kind of uh, very soft. Um, and even though yesterday's was quite colorful with like the blue mascara, it was still a very sort of soft look. And I wanted to go for something a little bit more uh, structured with a liner, something that I'd wear when I'm going out or when I'm filming, for example. So I've gone for more of a coral pink and dark purple look. So what I did was I really wanted to use this shade again, but a little bit more bold. So I put that on the lid. Um, I blended it out a little bit and I put a little bit on the outer corner of the pink, which has sort of disappeared amongst the sort of mixing that I've done. And then I used this purple. I originally put it with a fluffy brush just in the outer corner in the crease, but then I did pack it on the lid and it performed a lot better than it did uh, in day one. So day one over the sort of teal and purple color, it looked a little bit patchy, but today it built up really, really nicely. I mimicked the same thing on the lower lash line. The pink, like I said, has sort of just blended into everything. So it mainly looks like these two colors, but with a hint of more pink. And then I thought I haven't used the silver yet. So I went to go put some on my lower lash line. It was patchy and did not look good. So I ended up trying to like scrape some off, apply more of the original colors over the top to hide it. And then I only put the smallest amount in the inner corner and I still don't like it. So I think the thing in this palette that's gonna frustrate me the most is the silver. And even though I have technically incorporated it into this look, I need to use it in like in a more bold way in a future look. And I really am not looking forward to that. So you can definitely see the coral there. You can definitely see uh, the purple, which applied really beautifully and blends really nicely. You can't really see much of the pink. Um, it, there is like a hazy sort of pink element going on. So I think the pink sort of added to the color tone, um, but it didn't, there's no like distinct sections of this that's pink. I did do a lot of blending, so it sort of, blended away a bit. You can see that silver in the inner corner, it is very chunky and it's hard to control because it just wants to go wherever it wants to go. So I didn't like this. All right, so I haven't done a look with this palette for a few days. I took a couple of days off because it's pastel, it's kind of hard. So I was gonna do one more look using like predominantly the silver and then I thought, look, I'll call it a day because five or so looks with an eight pan palette is more than enough. 
But the more I think about this palette, the more I am unsure about what I think about it. So I will still do a look using the silver. I've used a little bit of it today, but not predominantly. Um, but what I thought I want to start doing for a couple of days is actually mix this palette with other shades because I still feel like, I don't know, I don't know how wearable this is in a daily your daily routine. I don't know if this is something that a lot of people need. So I thought instead of just using this palette and calling it quits, I want to start working it with different shades and seeing what it adds to other sort of eyeshadows, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm sort of starting to do. Uh, I will still do a silver look, but, um, but I do want to play around with it more as like wearable looks. So I thought I'd just check in today really quickly. I've used that purple in the crease. So I used it quite heavily. I used a tiny bit of this in the inner corner. I don't like it. Um, but all over the lid, I used a taupe shimmer from uh, a NARS duo. So I thought I'd zoom in, just show you what it's like if you start using it with some more wearable eyeshadows. Okay, the lighting is not great because it is the end of the day and I'm using artificial lighting. Um, I should have taken, done this at the start of the day, but I didn't. So this is a bit lived in. I've had this on for quite some time, but you can see that in the crease there is that purple color and it works quite nicely with the taupe shimmer all over the lid. I did pop a little bit of that silver on the inner corner. It still didn't do too much. It still looks kind of patchy, like you can especially see here. It's like there's a lot here and then there's none on the inner corner, whereas I tried to apply it quite evenly. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, but this is just an example of how you can use the purple sort of mixed with more of a nude eye look. All right, we're back with mixing the looks. So I think this is look number six and I've got brown on the top lid. Boogie's on the move. Uh, brown on the top and I've got that sort of Tiffany blue color on the bottom. So what I used with this palette, so I just use the one shade. So I use this shade uh, all over the lower lash line. I'll show it to you, I'll zoom in, but I used it with the Colored Rain. Uh, this is the Queen of Hearts palette, so everything else I used was this, it's a beautiful palette. So I use these two shades, I use that sort of brown, I use a dark brown, a little bit of this brown, um, and I use this color as my inner corner highlight. So I'll show you, I put that over the sort of uh, Tiffany blue color. So um, it's sort of like an iridescent white, shimmer color. So hopefully you can see the look a little bit better there. So we've got just all the browns on the top lash line. So like a smoky shimmery brown look. And then I've got that sort of blue. I also put some gel liner. So this is from Inglot just to really make it pop. But you can see that soft sort of pastel blue down the bottom. And I've got that sort of inner corner highlight there as well. So I really like that Tiffany blue color. And I just wanted to mix it with colors that I would wear just on a daily basis. So that's sort of how I paired it. Overall, I really like this look, but I am a little bit disappointed that the um, color on my waterline did overtake the color on my lower lash line. So on my lower lash line, it looks very, very pale compared to it. Um, but that was more because I like putting a darker color on my lower lash line and I didn't have anything that matches it. If I had a mint or something, I totally would have put that in instead, but it was sort of the only color that I had that worked well with it. So I would have preferred to have something that matched a bit better and really uh, emphasize the color of the pastel, but I just didn't have something. So that's why um, it sort of overtakes with the dark teal. All right, we're back with the last look and I'm ready to conclude what I think about this palette. But first I will tell you what's on my face. It's very overcast and rainy today, so I have to have a lot of studio light, so I apologize. But um, I really wanted to do a look showcasing mainly the silver shade because that was the one that I was least excited for and I hadn't done a look with a lot of the silver, so that's what I did today. So today on my eyes, I put the silver all over the lid. I put the peachy color uh, in the crease, sort of to set the crease. Even though it does have shimmer, it blends really nicely. It looks really nice on the eye. It's quite soft and subtle, so it does work sort of into the crease. And then I pretty much just use this shade to deepen the outer corner, lower lash line. And then when I realized the look was looking very similar to some past looks that I did. Um, I think it was when I used this shade, that shade and the purple. I was like, it's very similar. So I also took some of this duochrome blue and just put it on the lower lash line just to make it look a little bit different. So I'll zoom in and show you the look. I'm not in love with this look and I'll sort of w work through it a little bit. Um, and then I'll tell you what I think about the palette overall. All right, so this is the last look. And to be fair, it's probably one of my least favorite looks. Um, I find the silver to be quite... Uh, it looks a little bit harsh on me and it's not so much just the 
like silver in general because I've tried some nice silvers. This one in particular, I'm just putting my finger in the pan. It's almost moist and there's a lot of white in it. It's like, it's a sparkle, but then the base is almost, I don't know, it's got like a white powdery sort of look to it. And because it is mainly a sparkle, it's very hard to control. It's not a finely milled sparkle. So it's like a glitter and it ends up looking patchy on the eye. So to get it quite like smooth, it's very hard to do unless you want to pack it on with a glitter glue and really make it really foiled, which I didn't want to do. I sort of saw this as being maybe a topper shade and I don't think it's a successful topper shade because like I said, it goes on quite patchy. I originally had on my inner corner, it rained down under my eye. I had to put concealer on and I covered it up with um, the blue and the purple. All right, so it's time to conclude what I think about this palette. And I've been using this palette now for about a week and a half um, because I didn't want to use this every single day. So that's how long this sort of review has taken. And it's taken me that long to wrap my head around what I think about this palette because it's an unusual palette. Um, it's a interesting color story uh, that you not everyone will wear every day. Um, and it's just sort of like, how does this work in my life? And what do I think of the quality? What do I think about the colors that were chosen to put in there? And um, would I recommend it to people overall? So these are sort of things that I think about. Um, and there are definitely pros and cons with this palette. So I'm going to start with the pros and then work into the cons and then talk about what I would have done to improve it. Okay, so I find this color story very inspiring. Um, I have been playing with a color a lot these days. So having these colors in my life is not unusual. I really like the balance of the colors. So I like that there's different finishes. We have like just a typical sort of soft shimmer. And what I mean by soft shimmer, I, it's not a highly reflective shimmer. So like I said, you can use this in the crease, you can use it all over the lid. Um, it's quite a soft pigmentation, but um, it's quite flattering. Uh, so I really like that finish. You have a similar one here. You have some mattes. Uh, these are all mattes, which I think mattes actually in this palette, they're the best performing shades. Then we have a duochrome shimmer, which is once again that soft shimmer, but it's got a slight duochrome. So it's like a blue, shifts a little bit purple. And then we have this sort of pressed glitter silver sort of thing. So I like that there's different finishes. I like there's different depths of color. Theoretically, you have all these sort of like um, mid-toned, bright-ish shades. And then you have a deep, which I think is imperative. I think the deep color here is what makes this palette wearable. So I, in the majority of the looks, like the look today and the looks, um, the first few looks that I did using this palette, I only used this palette. I didn't reach for anything else. Only two looks in this video. I paired it with a different palette. And the reason why I think you can create whole looks out of this is mainly because of this shade. So this, I find that these sort of dark mattes, um, you really need one to sort of really, you know, carve out a look and give dimension to a look, especially when, if you take that out, all the colors are of the same tone so they can look a little bit flat on the eye, if you know what I mean. So I feel like giving dimension, this is the key to the palette. And I think it's a beautiful uh, color. When I first applied it, it looked a little bit patchy, but every time I've used it since it has applied really nicely. It's not super, super pigmented. None of the shades in here are super, super pigmented, but really nice to apply, easy to build up. Uh, if you want it really intense, apply it with your finger. Otherwise it applies really nicely with any brush. You can blend it out. It blends nicely and it works with pretty much every color here, which I think is fantastic. And that is, in itself, I think a really good feat because a lot of brands just default to browns or blacks. They go, that goes with everything, it's fine. Whereas it's really nice to see like a plum color that does work with greens, it does work with purples, it does work with corals, it works with blues, it works with pinks. I think it's the perfect shade to pick and I really like this. Um, so that is positive. There is a sort of like a highlight shade in this. It's the silver. I, this is the thing I like the least about the palette, um, but I like that there was a highlight shade in there. I just think it could be improved like vastly by changing it to something else. So um, this is sort of like that inner corner highlight or topper shade. And I just, yeah, we'll get to it in the negatives. So let's ignore that for now. So I do really like the color story. I also like the fact that even though these are pastels, they're not very, very white based. Um, so 
Previously, uh, when I've tried pastel shades, they're very, very white and they look very chalky on skin. These aren't like that. These are just brights, but they're toned down brights. So they would have some white pigment to them, but they don't look chalky on the skin, which is fantastic because that's one thing that I've personally found unwearable about pastels in the past is they just look chalky and weird on the skin. These don't do that, which is fantastic. Um, I think the pigmentation could be better, um, but at the same time, I think the sort of amount of pigmentation that's in this is enough for you to have a lot of versatility. So you can apply it sheerly and just uh, a wash of color or you can build it up. Now, if you want it really, really opaque, it requires a bit of building up. So if you want this as a like a, a bit of color, uh, just a wash of color, um, you will like this. Otherwise, if you wanted these to be super, super opaque and you just put a little bit of pink on your lid and it's just like bold, you're probably going to be a bit disappointed by them. But um, I don't mind them. I think pigmentation isn't everything when it comes to eyeshadows. I think often uh, how easy it is to apply, how good it looks on the eye is often more important. But I did find there were times where I was using this, I was just like, okay, I have to pack this on with my finger because it's not giving me the pigmentation that I want. So uh, they're not maximum pigmented, if you know what I mean. Some more quick positives. Um, I think you can use these on your face as well. I have used that color, that color, a bit of that color as a blush. I think they're really pretty. If you're into that sort of um, watercolor blush look and you want to incorporate a little bit of um, duochrome blue, you know, I think these would be very pretty if you're going for a bit of color on the face as well. They are very blendable, so they would look nice on the face, but I just particularly really like the color story. I think this is pastel and color done well. Um, I look at it, I think it's really fun um, and it's a, yeah, it's a palette that inspires me. All right, onto the negatives and the biggest negative for me is this shade here. I really don't like it. Um, I, I don't like silvers to begin with, so I'm just gonna put that out there, but I can respect a good silver. Uh, this is a hard silver to use. It's pretty much like pressed chunky glitter. Um, and I think what they were going for was that once again, it's sort of a neutral shade, so it can go with everything, but I disagree with that. I actually feel like this clashes with most things. And if you're trying to build up a beautiful purple, if you then put this silver on top, um, it actually takes away from the purple and, makes it look messy. I just feel like this looks like craft glitter. Um, I don't like it. Every time I've used it, I've actually, sometimes I've scraped it off and like covered it up with something else because that's how much I don't like this silver. Like I said, I don't like silver in general, but that's not the main issue here. I could forgive it if it was a good silver. Um, I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. And I'm gonna swatch it like it's chunky and it's sort of wet, but I'm gonna compare it to one in the Viseart Liaison palette because that has a silver that I actually think is quite nice and flattering. So this one here. So this is Linda Holberg, which is sort of chunky and very hard to control. And this is Viseart, which is a lot softer and it looks a little bit more refined. I'll zoom in and show you. All right, so I've just blended those out a bit better so you can see them a little bit better. This is Viseart, this is the Linda Hallberg. You can see that this almost has like a bit of a white cast and then it's like there's chunky glitter. It's very, very hard to control. So even though silver isn't my favorite, I would prefer a silver that's a little bit more predictable and looks a little bit more even than one that's just like chunks of glitter. What also sort of irritated me about this silver was that um, it's one out of eight shades. And I sort of think that when you're, you know, using a palette and it's there's 12 shades, 20 shades, and there's one you don't like, you're like, all right, it's not that bad. The vast majority I do enjoy, but in such a sort of small palette, having one so sort of disruptive, I didn't enjoy. And also I could just think of better shades that would have worked a lot better in this palette. And I did mention earlier in this video that I wanted like a shimmery lemon yellow and I totally stick by that. I've got some examples of things that I would have preferred. So Linda Holberg has done these metallic mysteries palette. I don't have the first one. I've got the second one and there's a beautiful shade called Collision in here. Um, this is a like a beautiful like sparkly topper done well. Uh, it's sort of like um, a sort of soft gold color, but the shimmer doesn't have any base color to it. Whereas the silver in the spectral palette almost has like a white cast to it. So this one is a beautiful topper shade and not saying have the exact same thing in the spectral palette, but maybe have the same sort of 
uh, formula, so maybe a different color. If it was like a soft iridescent yellow um, in this sort of formula, it would have been beautiful. Um, some other shades that I'm thinking of that would have been worked really well, I'm just thinking of this Too Faced Life's a Festival palette. There's two shades in here that are sort of duochrome yellows. Um, that add a lot of dimension to the looks that you put them with or put them over the top of. So um, this is sort of the darker shade. This is the lighter shade. You can see that they do have color. I will zoom in again. They do have some color to them, but they're also sort of transformer shades. And I think this kind of color would have been beautiful with the pastels. I also know that in the Metallic Mysteries 1 palette, there was a similar shade to this uh, Pat McGrath palette where there's a topper shade here that once again is like an iridescent. It's like an iridescent yellow that has like multi-chrome to it. Um, and I think something like this would have been perfect instead of um, the silver. And I'll just put that one here so you can see what I'm talking about when I zoom in. Now I'm just gonna grab the silver and I'm going to swatch it near them so you can sort of compare them all. All right, so here we have the Linda Hallberg shade, which is just a beautiful sparkly topper. We have the silver that's in the palette. We have the two shades from um, the Too Faced palette. You can see one is like yellow shifts green, one is white shifts yellow. And then we have that sort of topper shade, which is a similar tone to this, but a bit more sparkly topper from the Pat McGrath palette, but that's similar to one, I believe, from a Linda Hallberg palette. So I think this color story would have worked better with the palette than this. This automatically makes things look frosty. This would have made things a little bit more fun. And to hopefully make the point a little bit clearer, I've decided to swatch all shades. I've put the silver that comes with the palette on the top so you can see how the silver actually looks layered over these eyeshadows and then I've taken the light shade from the Too Faced eyeshadow palette so this is just that sort of iridescent white that shifts uh, sort of a yellow color and I've put them underneath. So you can see the, the yellow does work with every single shade. It lightens every single shade without actually making it look patchy and weird um, and sort of I don't know, gray. And just to clarify, the shade that I'm referring to is this shade here. It's a pretty standard sort of white, light yellow, shimmery sort of topper color. So that would work a lot better because one thing I think that this palette is missing is a highlight shade. So yeah, I think any sort of light yellow lemony color with a bit of shimmer or um, a bit of sparkle would work really well with this palette instead of the silver. I just like, I just feel like it's screaming for a highlight shade that is actually wearable and doesn't make things look dirty and gray and chunky. Um, and I also think a yellow in here would look awesome. I might pop um, me sort of replacing this with a yellow on the screen so we can see uh, how it sort of looks as a mock-up. But I just think this would have made this palette a lot more wearable and a lot more diverse. I could mix the yellow with the peach to make it more of a true orange. I could mix the yellow with the green to make it more of a chartreuse color. Um, you could do a lot more with this palette if there was just a beautiful yellow here and one thing I was really missing throughout the looks was a highlighter um, because sometimes these looks can look quite flat. And once again, you want a bit of dimension with some depth and also some light. And I just couldn't get that from this silver. I really didn't like the silver. And to me, it sort of put a dampener on the whole palette because this palette's very fun. And I did enjoy using it. You definitely can create full looks with it but this shade really frustrated me. And I almost think that silver in there, it actually ruins the palette. And I think that's what I'm frustrated about. I know it's only one shade, but it actually ruins the looks that you create. And that's really bad, especially since I've tried some really nice glitter toppers from Linda Holberg. And I could just, I was just going from the start, I'm like, where is a nice sort of yellow tone shade that I can use to sort of brighten up all these other colors, but add some dimension to the look because I love the plum because it works with everything to add some depth, but I need something that adds brightness that works with every shade and the silver just did not do it. So I was really wanting to reach for a highlight shade that worked with all shades, similar to how this berry works with all shades. I wanted a highlight shade that works with all shades, which makes the, the palette a lot more easy to reach for. And you can create more looks, sort of softer looks. Um, you can make more complete looks because there were so many days where I'm like, I just want a highlight color, um, but I can't find one in this palette. So the problem with this palette, I think, is that the colors aren't what everyone wants to wear on a daily basis. Some people love pastels every day and then you'll love this palette. Um, they're beautiful shades. 
but for a lot of people including myself I like color but pastels are still sort of a little bit out of my comfort zone so I think the fact that there is something that sort of is a little bit jarring about this palette which is this shade um, it makes this even less reachable if you know what I mean I do like that um, I can create full looks with this palette without reaching for other palettes but I don't feel like this is something that I'd reach for on a daily basis and I know that that is a big concern people have for this palette and I can't alleviate those concerns for you because I'm still struggling to want to wear this every day, but I think the pops of color are beautiful. And if you're looking for shades like this, this is a nice one to check out. Or if you love Linda Hallberg and you're just a completionist and you want all her palettes, check it out. But it's not a perfect palette and it's not a palette that I want to wear every day. Um, there are palettes that I've reviewed recently and even on my days off, I'm like, oh, I'm so excited to use it. Um, this one I actually needed to take breaks from because I found it a little bit hard to incorporate into looks that I want to wear on a daily basis. I still feel like that yellow would have fixed some of my issues, um, but it's a fun palette. It's not an everyday palette. It's not a palette for everyone. I will reach for this when I want a Tiffany blue or I want this beautiful soft purple and I love this purple. So I, the pink's really nice as well. I particularly like the mattes. I think the matte formula is the best. So I'm happy that I have it. Do, is it something that everyone needs in their collection? No, it's not, unfortunately. I would have liked to say that it is, but um, it's not. I also wanted to quickly mention that a few people have compared this to another pastel palette that is on has been on the market for a while um, because whenever I've shown this people are like that's just like the blah 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 palette I forgot what it is off the top of my head um, I will link down below a video that Melissa Gold did where she did one eye using this palette one eye using that palette they're very different so I just wanted to point that out so yeah they're both pastel palettes but very different so it's a bit of a bummer uh, leaving on that note it's not a bad palette but it's not a fantastic palette it's just a decent palette and it's going to come down to if you like these colors and how often you're going to wear them uh, if you've been going okay the one thing that's missing in my collection right now are some of these fun sort of pastel colors that aren't too chalky and white um, but also seem quite wearable and do work well with other colors um, then it might be one you want to check out if you look at them and go that's fun as a palette I'm never going to use it I would definitely give it a miss so all right, guys, so that's about it for today. Let me know if you've tried this palette, what you think about it. I'm really curious. What did you think about that silver? Do you dislike it as much as I do? Because um, I have strong feelings about it. I think it, I do think it unfortunately ruins a very nice palette. Bugger. Um, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.